Imagine a day where children are guided and nurtured in a way that honors their unique humanness. A day where, instead of being expected to change in order to fit in, children can be met right where they're at. Welcome to Where They're Planted, a podcast for parents and care providers of unique children. Caring for a child with a developmental, emotional, or behavior challenge, a neurodiverse brain, or difficult early life experiences can be confusing and exhausting. On this podcast, we'll help your child flourish and strengthen their roots by helping you not only understand them, but also gain the skills to help them bloom where they're planted. We'll use brain science, nervous system tools, collaborative strategy sessions, and a deep understanding of the developmental process to create a fertile environment around your child in order to nurture their growth. I am your host, Jen Blusky, an occupational therapist with over 25 years of experience and a parent coach. My most closely held title, however, is that of a single mom of two thriving adopted kids, so I have walked this walk. I am truly excited to share, teach, and dive into these important topics on each episode. Welcome back to Where They're Planted. We are a podcast for parents and care providers of unique children with the goal of not only striving to understand your child, but also to gain the skills you need in order to create a fertile environment around your child in order to nurture their growth. Today, we are going to be talking about integrating parents into occupational therapy work, the dynamic duo. So, I am an occupational therapist, and our guest today is Shannon, who is also an occupational therapist, who I'll introduce in a second. We, as occupational therapists, often get questions around, like, what do you do? And how do you work with kids? What does that mean? Or you might be a parent who has their child in occupational therapy, but you're not exactly sure how to engage with your occupational therapist, or if you have a place in in therapy. And so what we wanted to do today is just really sit down and talk about how we, in our work, really integrate parents into therapy and really helping you understand what occupational therapy even is with the goal of sending you with some strategies and some questions to ask maybe as you're trying to support your unique child. Shannon Stuckey is my colleague and one of my favorite humans to work with in the understanding of our children and families. Shannon has supported children and families for over a decade as an occupational therapist and parent coach. She specializes in collaborating with families to develop a better understanding of their child's behaviors and abilities. She incorporates individualized intervention techniques designed to uncover and promote change at the root level. Shannis has extensive training in sensory processing, emotional regulation, and relationships. She holds a certificate in DIR floor time, kinetic bridging, rhythmic movement training, craniosacral therapy, therapeutic listening, and astronaut training. Shannon also serves as a supervisor and mentor to occupational therapists, and she is a graduate of UW-Madison. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you. So I wanted to start today by asking the question, what are we looking for or assessing when kids come to us for occupational therapy in our practice here? Yeah. Yes. So for occupational therapy, a lot of what we're looking at, what it boils down to is how does the child function with the tasks they need to do, depending on their age in life to function. So a lot of times you'll hear like daily living skills and things of that nature. But what does that really mean? Like, what are we really looking at? We're looking at foundationally, I actually like to consider it like a child's profile. So what is the child's sensory profile? How is the child make a sense of their sensory world? And then there's other bubbles that we look at of their motor capacity For example, how can they sit upright and act onto gravity and act onto things in their environment? And that even expands to all these other intricate things such as ocular motor skills and visual perceptual skills. But in a nutshell, it's bringing those those two core foundations, sensory, motor, and also emotional regulation. How are they able to kind of reorganize themselves after they've been excited or really surprised by something. And those three are at the foundation of what we're going to uncover of how is this child making sense of things and 
how might that apply to what we're noticing? Why are you here in OT? What behaviors are you noticing at home or at school? And I, I love how you say how we're putting those two together. You know, we're putting sort of the sensory environment that's coming from the outside, looking at that. When some of the sensory systems come from the inside, we're looking at that motor, that all that intricacies of motor development. And then we're looking at kind of how their brain's processing it a little bit and sort of how those pieces go together. And you're right that it always, at least in an occupational therapy world, it leads back to, can they function and do the things that they need to be doing during the day? It always comes back to function. Yeah. Can the child sit and have dinner with the family, right? Can they do their morning routine? Things, things of that nature that are just kind of everyday tasks. And I think parents easily get lost in what we're doing in OT and how it translates to like, what are we doing in this session? What is happening? And how is this going to translate? So hopefully after this podcast, you'll have like a little bit more understanding of the translation of all the skills that they're learning in OT to what that looks like as they go out into the world and into their daily lives, right? It's it's so interesting because sometimes I'll be in a session with a parent and I will be doing an obstacle course or I'll be playing a game of catch with a child. And the parent was kind of like looking at me sideways saying, well, why are you doing that when we're actually working on, you know, following their morning routine? But how does that translate that idea that we're breaking the task down and really looking at those skills underneath? Yeah. So meanwhile, every single thing that you're doing, the therapist is doing is quite intentional to practicing these skills and By practicing too, it's like, yes, they're going to practice this in a one hour little chunk of time, but it's quite powerful. And I I give this example a lot because I think it kind of sticks more concretely in our minds. But if you want to strengthen your bicep muscle, you're going to do a bicep rep, right? But if you want to work on things like emotional regulation, like auditory processing, like postural control, like all these executive functioning, like get the thing done, kid. We need to kind of unlock it for them in the moment to actually do that bicep rep in the moment. So we're strengthening it in this little snippet of time. And hopefully having a really great relationship with a parent so they're involved and they really know what we're doing. So it's not just this isolated little hour that the child gets to explore some of these capacities yeah. within them. Yeah. So you're talking about creating success by breaking it down, helping the child know, oh, yes. I can do that thing. And then you just layered yeah. in the parent. And so let's talk a little bit more about why integrating the parent work is just vital to how we see in our clinic and our occupational therapy work. Yeah. I like to think of my role as a therapist as really empowering parents to understand their child more deeply. Like the parent is coming to me with the utmost knowledge and knowing their child on such nuanced levels from a parent lens. And what we're going to do is layer on from an OT lens which is looking at these more foundational developmental bubbles of sensory, motor, emotional regulation, executive functioning. And so together, we could see the child more deeply for why they're doing what they're doing. And my hope is that every parent that I work with has a better understanding of how they could support them because they know, oh, it was actually their need to seek out movement to sit down and do their homework. They needed that movement in order to unlock their brain and feel more regulated to attend to this learning going on. So the parent then starts to view their child from a slightly different lens, a slightly deeper lens as to how I could support them to do all the things that they need to do. And by really supporting our kids at the place, at that edge of success and growth, that growth edge is- I love that. Right? And so by yes. showing our parents, yeah. this is where your child's growth edge is. They're where their developmental growth edge is, their regulation growth edge. That's where we then step in and support in order to continue to push, right? Continue to push growth or function 
as we talk about as occupational therapists. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And the other thing that we talk a lot about with our parents is, you know, we can, as occupational therapists, if any of these parents listening have, you know, had a therapist hand them recommendations at the end of a session saying, I want you to roll over the ball 10 times this week, or I want you to follow this written schedule this week, which is great. It's good, probably really important information. But let's talk a little bit about the nuance that we provide as occupational yeah. therapists with our parents right in sessions in order to be able to integrate these yeah. skills. Yeah. I think that could be make or break to see an actual change or not. So what you're getting at is, you know, I've got so many examples of clients that I've worked with in the past that we've come from a top-down approach of really supporting, okay, this child really needs a visual schedule maybe to really understand the sequence of their morning task, for example. But there's something missing still, like they're still not doing it. Shannon, I, I tried all these beautiful strategies, these visual schedules, these jumping on the trampoline before eating. I, I tried all these things that you told me, but it's not landing. And this is where I like the art of OT and connecting with children and family really comes into those nuances of how is that child's profile absorbing kind of how we're supporting them. So supporting the parents and knowing that they actually are the glue, they actually are the conduit, they actually, they in and of themselves, the relationship piece of the mama or the dada or the caregiver or whoever it might be, they are the one to have it be successful or not based on all the nuances of the tone of their voice, uh, the state they might be in. Right. The timing of how often we say it or how quickly we say it, or do we take a pause? When do we stand mm. firm in right now it's time to come sit down? Or when do we show some flexibility and, ooh, you really need to wiggle across the floor on the way to the chair, right? And this is all based on the knowledge that we have from the OT lens of looking at those foundational pieces of, okay, you know, when I spoke to them, it felt really intense to them, whether it's the emotional tone or, you know, it surprised them because they were so deep in whatever they were doing, looking at the sensory the motor, the emotional profile, so to speak, of the child, of if it's going to yeah. land or not, yeah. to create change and for the child to get that morning routine done or sit at that mm -hmm. table, right? It's so interesting. Early in my career, yeah. I would do sort of a more traditional approach of, come on back, you know, Joey, I'll see you in an hour, mom. You know, and we were doing this really good regulation mm. work and motor work. And we were seeing kids who are able to, you know, sit upright and get their sock on without falling over backwards. And we were seeing kids who were able to transition out of session. And, you know, I felt really powerful, like, hey, I got this. I know how to do this. And parents were reporting back to me saying, I can't get them to do any of this at home. None of it. Yeah. And what the missing piece was, was it doesn't matter if they can do it with me. And because they're developmentally yeah. children, often, right, we know that developmentally under the age of seven, kids are not fully regulating on their own, that they're not intended to yeah. be doing it without a regulatory partner or a cue. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's needed within the relationship. Yeah. It's, it's with one another that these skills will start to develop. When we started bringing parents in the room and then we could see that nuance. Yeah. Oh, I'm saying it one time and then I'm pausing for 30 seconds and then I'm giving some visual cues. But oh, the parent is saying it over and over and over again and saying it with a lot of words. That's mm -hmm. just an example. But you can start to see how the shift is happening or how yeah. the difficulty in function with the different relational partner is happening. Yeah, exactly. And I find that I see the most shifts and change when I feel so connected to the parents and there's a foundation of trust and knowing between me and the parents where not only are they starting to expand their understanding of their child in a deeper way, but it, they start to consider their own profile 
in it as well and how how the combination of the two is really the art of supporting our littles in life because it's not done in isolation, whether that be OT for an hour or living your life as a little one. All of these skills that they're learning is is through yeah. us. And that, Shannon, really kind of speaks to the integrated model that we are doing here in our practice. Yeah. And so let's talk about mm-hmm. what that looks like from an occupational therapy lens. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have found this to be honestly just groundbreaking in a way it sounds so, because it's my life and my profession and I care about it so much. It really has been just transforming the way I connect with my clients is by getting the parents on board and having them really understand what we're doing and we're actually getting somewhere. So What that looks like here at Children's Therapy Network is we might have a client that comes in that has concerns around their emotional regulation. Let's just take that for example. And big meltdowns and the parent is unsure what's going on and really want to build their child up for success as they go into the classroom. And we're going to get to know not only the child, but the parent more deeply and it can be in a number of forms. It can be through occupational therapy sessions where the parent is involved in the session and actually a player. Like on the floor, rolling the ball, swinging the swing, jumping off the loft some of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Connected and curious and engaged fully in what we're doing. And I am also finding that it's really, really effective to do these pull-out meetings as well. So that could be occasional, depending on what the needs are of the family, or it can be more in depth where they're actually getting specific parent coaching. So it could look like a number of ways. And I think it really depends, again, on the profile of the parent and the child of what's going to work best. So say, for example, if a parent's in the session, it might look like we're all doing this together and the therapist is modeling for the parent and we'll debrief later. Or it might look like I'm actually going to be coaching the parent in the session of maybe some suggestions or things we could do to support the skill even in more deeply. And then, Jen, you could speak to the parent coaching work that can be quite transforming for parents and the work, you know, their connection with their child. Well, that's what I find is when we have these really connected relationships with not only with the child, but with the parent is there's this sort of natural spiraling, spiraling of skills that starts to happen, right? We shift the Mm. child. And then what tends to happen is there has to be some sort of natural shift for the parent. And so sometimes that either opens up Mm. an opportunity for the parent to learn a little bit about themselves and their own nervous system and their own way of being in the world or their own beliefs around, you know, what function is, And then that spiral opens up to maybe seeing our child a different way, which allows our child to then their skills to shift and change in another way. And so you're exactly right. Some of the time we're we're really in a dyad approach. And sometimes we, we are pulling parents out just to give them that foundation, that safe space, that relationship, right? The relationship Mm -hmm. to truly explore Mm -hmm. their own systems, their own, patterns, their own Mm -hmm. pieces that relate to how they're parenting their child, or which when you look at the foundations of occupational therapy, occupational therapy is all about your daily activities and your roles. Well, parenting is one of those roles, right? So parenting is something that is one of our biggest roles, I'll argue. And so why are we not supporting parents in their role of parenting, especially when we're parenting Mm -hmm. kids with unique systems. And so that back and forth. And I find that a lot of times when I open the door to these conversations, a lot of the parents don't even know that's a possibility, that that's what we could talk about here, because maybe some preconceived notions of maybe more of a traditional approach of like, I'm going to drop my kid off or my kid's got to do their work here and learn something. So, so yeah, like part of this podcast is to, to break up that model of the kid coming in and getting their work done and leaving. And through that model, there's growth. And 
we're kind of busting that myth that it's actually far more, it's far more of a process and, and it's necessary to have the conduit of the parent, of the caregiver involved yeah, to create There's change. actually some pretty decent research out there showing that, that the, the parent yeah. um, involvement is vital to creating change in therapy. And so I want to take a minute, you know, for parents who are listening, who maybe are like, Ooh, this is interesting. Right. And <laughs> how in the world do mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. make this happen? Right. Oh, I would like this. I, yeah. I'm curious about this. How do I do this? Where do we go? Yeah. Where are, you know, what are some ideas for parents? Yeah. I mean, the things that come to mind are connecting with your school. If we're seeing some challenges at, at the school to get support, maybe doing an assessment of where they're at and if we have needs there. There's also the idea of getting a really good neuropsych done to better understand how the child is making sense of and processing things and applying that work that they their, of their inner world. Another thought is, you know, here at CTN, there's like drop-in groups. I know one of our therapists here has a space where parents could just hop in to learn a little bit more about what we do and and maybe share a little bit about their child or what they're noticing or maybe some concerns they might have. Then I'll make sure to put um, the caregiver drop-in into our yeah. show notes so anybody can access that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a plethora of books, but you know, my hope is that it's not, again, done in isolation, that there could be a point of contact, a point of human contact, because you're not alone. And so many parents in today's world, I think, are dealing with a lot of challenges with their children, just feeling, you know, grounded and good with all the demands that modern day has on us as parents, and in particular for our children. Yeah. And I do want to advocate encourage parents, empower you to seek yeah, yeah. therapists, seek therapy team, seek the c- connection points that feel right in your gut. Yeah. Ask questions. Ask your therapist the hard questions. My favorite families are the ones who come in with hard questions. What if you do it this way? Can't you yeah. do it that way? I really need you to help me with this. And that will help you know if you can have this teaming approach with your therapist. It's okay to interview therapists. It's okay to interview Mm -hmm. and find the fit where you feel like you can be a team member for your child. And, you know, in some areas, there's going to be a lot of options. And in some areas, you may not even have a pediatric occupational therapist available to you. There are ways of accessing parent coaching online. There are ways of accessing that are across distance online. And so I really encourage parents to advocate for yourselves and advocate for your kids if this is making some sense to you of how we create some change, Mm -hmm. you know, in in parenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could do this in an effective way, right? You know, we, we can could do it together. We do it together. We are, we are meant to be a team in this. All right. I think I'm going to leave it there today. Thank you, Shannon. Great. Thanks, Jen. Hello, Where They're Planted listeners. I wanted to pop on here and remind you of our Thriving Parents Collective online courses. If you like what you hear on this podcast and are seeking more, check out this resource. This course offers you over nine educational videos and 50 pages of self-reflective workbook in order to guide you through the process of integrating connected parenting strategies into your day-to-day life. Listen when it's convenient for you and use the content as the foundation for a shared language between you and your partner or family members. In addition, access one-to-one sessions with a parent coach to support individualized strategies to help you meet your child right where they're planted. For listeners, access this course for $99 by using the code THRIVING at the checkout. We look forward to having you join our Thriving Parents Collective. Where They're Planted is a Lit Path Studios podcast and is produced by Jamie Gale and Jen Blusky. Music is by Gaston Reen and Pod5. Thank you for loving your child right where they're planted.